In the previous lectures, we spoke about the origin of secret societies and how they are controlled. And we saw that they originate from Babylon, which gave rise to Kabbalism and also to Islamic secret societies, the Ismailis, the Kamathites, the Fatimites, the Druzes and the Assassins, which we haven't dealt with as such. Out of Kabbalism eventually came Gnosticism, which replaces Jesus Christ with a universal Messiah, who today is called the Cosmic Christ. And this Cosmic Christ has none of the attributes of the Jesus Christ of the Bible, but in order to make him acceptable to the world, everybody will have to accept him. That means Jesus Christ, even amongst Christians, will have to be brought lower to a level of this Cosmic Christ to accommodate all others who want to be his equal. According to Eliphas Levi, uh, Gnosticism was founded by Simon Magus, who was a sorcerer and put on a cloak of Christianity. He was the one who had himself baptized, but he was rebuked by Peter for wanting to buy the Holy Spirit. So, a cloak of Christianity covered Gnosticism. Out of this philosophy, eventually, it became formalized and the Knights Templars, within a large religious system, were the harborers of the ancient philosophy. In other words, they were the harborers of the secret of Gnosticism. They had very close ties with uh, the Islamic societies and eventually we saw that the Knights Templars were suppressed by the King of France. Many of them escaped, however, to Spain, where the King in Spain gave them his protection and they flourished further and their rites and rituals and degrees were perpetuated in subsequent organizations. So the Templars ne never really died other than in name. The Templar secret knowledge was kept alive in an inner circle in Rosicrucianism and overseen by the Jesuit order. The Jesuit order then created Freemasonry as we saw on Sunday and uh, Freemasonry is the so-called Protestant arm if you like, although it's not only a Protestant arm, it is an international arm to bring about those changes which are necessary to set up this dark kingdom. So tonight we're going to have a look at Freemasonry and look behind the scenes as to what it really entails. Because most Freemasons, like in all secret societies, are fully unaware of what happens behind the scenes. You will remember that uh, Gary H. Carr, in his work on route to global occupation, gave a very similar uh, expose. He also takes it through Kabbalism, Gnosticism to the Knights Templars. And then he misses out on the, the Jesuit connection, which is the military powerful arm controlling all these things. And he has Freemasonry control Marxism, American European secret political societies, international banking elite, and then, scarily, the World Council of Churches. Now, this is not me saying this, this is this man, and he is uh, no, no small fish. And uh, theosophical societies, together with many cults, then constitute what is known as the New Age Movement. And the New Age Movement is much larger than what we believe just to be uh, a few esoterics doing their thing. It culminates in an entire system which is to unite the entire world and the World Council of Churches will play a very prominent role in this mechanism.